Hello everybody, hope that you are doing very well and welcome to today's video where we are going to be going over a cryptocurrency trading strategy. This is a trading strategy that works for day trading and swing trading, meaning that we can keep a trade open for a few hours or a few days. And it also works across different markets. So we can incorporate this strategy into trading Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, Forex markets or the stock markets. Uh, so you'll be able to use this strategy instantly after watching this video. So I hope that you thoroughly enjoy it. Take some notes, give your full attention and let's begin. So did you know that 80% of the time price is not in a trend, but it is ranging between support and resistance. So we want to take advantage of that as much as possible by buying the support and selling the resistance. So before taking any trades, you must always ask yourself these three questions. Number one, can I clearly see my support and resistance levels? Number two, do I have confluence at this level? And number three, is price action in my favor at this level? If the answer is yes to these three questions, you take the trade without any emotion. Take a look at this Bitcoin chart. The first thing that we see here is that this four hour level acted as resistance multiple times. So we draw the resistance level. Then we look for confluence at this level. If we take our Fibonacci retracement tool, we can see that the CC is just next to it. Afterwards, we want to wait for price to come back up and see how it will react at this level on the lower time frames. When we want to take a short, we always look for a shooting star or a bearish engulfing candle formation. That is our trigger to enter the short. If we do not see a shooting star or a bearish engulfing at this level, we simply do not enter the trade. So let's go to the lower term time frames to see what happened. This is the 15 minute chart. We can see that price touched a first time at this level, but we didn't have any entry because price action was not bearish yet. But a few hours later, price touched a second time this level, and we can see the formation of a bearish engulfing candle. That is our entry trigger. So we short here and we put our stop loss above this candle's high. Let's go to the five minute chart to see what happened. We can clearly see a nice shooting star, which is a sign that price action is bearish. So this could also have been our entry to short and we would put our stop loss above this candle. What happened next? Price went down and we closed the trade with a very nice percentage gain at our support level, which is always the zero point of the Fibonacci retracement. Looking at the risk to reward ratio, we risked one to make 20 times more. If we risked $100 on this trade, we would have made $2,000. So we risk a little to make a lot. Now, you might be wondering, why did you close the trade? You could have made more money by keeping it as price went down. Remember that this is a strategy for trading the range, meaning that we always close the trade at our support because no trader can know exactly if the price will break support or bounce from it. The most important thing for us is to take money from the market and repeat this process again and again and again. So let's jump to another example. Here is the Ethereum USD chart. We notice that this four hour level acted as support multiple times. So when price broke it, we expect it to now act as resistance. We then take our Fibonacci retracement to see if we have confluence at this area. As you can see, we had the CC retracement just next to this four hour level. So we wait for price to come back up and we monitor the price action at this level on the lower term time frame. So let's go to the 15 minute time frame. We see that price rejected from this area, but at this moment, we still don't have any bearish candle formation. So we wait. And then we see this bearish engulfing candle, which is a sign that price action is bearish at our key resistance level. So we take an entry at the close of this candle and we put our stop loss just above this candle. What happened next? 
Well, price went down and we closed our trade at support, which is the zero point of our Fibonacci retracement. We follow the same process when we want to buy. In this chart, we can see that this four hour level acted as resistance and then support, so we draw it. We then take our Fibonacci retracement and we notice that we have confluence between the CC and the four hour level. So we wait for price to retrace and we monitor the price action at this level on the lower term time frame. When we want to take a long, we always look for a hammer or a bullish engulfing candle. That is our trigger to enter the long position. So let's go over to the 15 minute chart. We notice that when price came back to this four hour level, it formed a nice hammer candle. This is our trigger to enter the trade and we put our stop loss just below this candle. What happened next? Price went up and we closed the trade at resistance, which is always the zero point of our Fibonacci retracement. Look at the risk to reward ratio. We risked one to make 25 times more meaning that if we risked $100 on this trade, we would have made $2,500. So we risk a little to make a lot. As you can see, trading is not hard if you know what you are looking for. Also guys and girls, if you like what you are seeing and enjoying the content, please leave some comments down below or feedback and leave a thumbs up as it is always heartwarming to see what you think. Moving on. We can use this same strategy for Forex. This is the Euro USD pair. We identified that this four hour level acted as a resistance multiple times. So we draw it. We then take our Fibonacci retracement and we see that we have confluence with the CC zone. We then wait for price to come back to this area and we monitor the price action on the lower term timeframes. So let's go to the 15 minute chart. Look at the price action when we reach that level. We can clearly see the formation of a shooting star, which is our trigger to enter a short, and we put our stop loss just above this candle. What happened next? Well, price went down and we closed the trade with a very nice profit at our support, which is the zero point of our Fibonacci retracement. Let's jump to another example. In this chart, we spot that this daily level was acting as support and resistance. So we mark it as our daily level. Next, we look for confluence by taking our Fibonacci retracement and we detect that the CC is very close to our daily level. Then we wait for price to come back down to this area of support and we track the price action on the lower term timeframes. So let's go to the four hour. Look how price reacted when it came back to touch this daily level. We can clearly see the formation of a hammer candle which is a strong sign that price action is bullish at our support. So we enter a long here and we put our stop loss just below this candle. What happened next? Well, price changed direction and went up and we closed the trade at resistance, which is the zero point of our Fibonacci retracement. Let me show you this again on another pair. Here, we identify this four hour level acting as support and resistance. So we draw it. After that, we take our Fibonacci retracement and we see that there is confluence between this four hour level and the CC. So again, we wait for price to come down and we monitor the price action at this area on the lower term timeframes. So let's go to the 15 minute chart. What do you notice? When price came back to the four hour level, we clearly see the formation of this bullish engulfing candle, which is our entry trigger to enter along and we put our stop loss just below this candle. What happened next? Well, price went up because this level acted as strong support and we closed the trade at our resistance, which is the zero point of our Fibonacci retracement. Now, remember this. The CC zone is not a strategy by itself, meaning that we never take a trade by only using it alone. We always look for confluence with support and resistance levels and track the price action at these levels. So you might be wondering, why do we even need to use the CC zone? We need to use it because most traders have their eye at this level. Moreover, most trading is done by bots and algorithms, and they are programmed to take this level into consideration when making trading decisions. Let me show you how this concept is also working on the higher term timeframes. 
This is the Bitcoin USD chart on the monthly time frame. Why did the price stop exactly at this level? First, we spot that this is a monthly level that acted as resistance, so we draw it. Then, if we take our Fibonacci retracement from high to low, we clearly see that we had confluence between the CC and the monthly level, making it a very high resistance region. So, let's see what happened on the lower term timeframes when price came back to touch this level. This is the one hour chart. Look at the bearish price action when price came back to touch this monthly level. We clearly see this bearish engulfing candle, which is our trigger to enter a short, and we would have placed our stop loss just above this candle. But what happened next? Price went down and almost touched the zero point of our Fibonacci retracement. So you can see trading has nothing to do with guessing and it is not difficult when you know what you're doing. You just need to have a plan and an understanding of how price action works at key levels of support and resistance. So if you would like to learn more about this concept, then go to chartchampions.com to instantly improve your trading. Again, if you liked the video, please leave us some comments below to let us know what you think and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video we make.